Traveler. <laughs> I'm learning more about you all the time. sunshine. So, where shall we go for a walk?
Today is a lucky day. sunshine. So, where shall we go for a walk? Commission's headquarters, so... Traveler, it's been a while. If you're looking for the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I'm afraid your timing is unfortunate. They're not here right now. Are they out on business? The Commissioner is out on business, and Miss Kamisato is standing in for some meetings in the Commissioner's place. If it's urgent, you're welcome to wait inside until they get back. What do you think? Shall we go in? If it were anyone else, I couldn't allow it. But seeing as you're so close with the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I think it should be okay. We'll be heading in then. Thanks! Hmm? Hello, dears. 
Is there something you want to say? <laughs> of course, traveler. Yes, I know who you are. Miss Kamisato has told me about you. What would you like to know? Oh, they're both very well indeed. Lately, Miss Kamisato has been rather busy attending all kinds of meetings and occasionally paying visits to some local organizations on the Commissioner's behalf. As for the Commissioner himself, well, you know, busy as ever. That much hasn't changed. Although, he does seem to be in a rather good mood these days. So pretty much business as usual in the Yashiro Commission, huh? Very much so. Well, got any more questions? You're very welcome. In fact, I would love nothing more than for you to come and visit more often. But I'm sure you must be far too busy to have time for that. Miss Kamisato talks about you all the time. She seems so thrilled to have you as a friend. And she's always saying how talented you are and how much she admires you. I must say, many things in Inazuma seem to have taken a turn for the better since you arrived here. So, you're not just Miss Kamisato's knight in shining armor, you know. You're a hero to us all. I mean it. Whenever the Commissioner dines at home, Toma always joins him. I always find myself at my most relaxed when I'm serving the two of them and listening to them chat away. The Commissioner has such a busy schedule that he doesn't always have the chance to take his meals at home. But given the opportunity, he always prefers to dine here. They say it's because Toma's a much better chef than most. <laughs> oh, the Commissioner is so fond of home comforts. They get to talking about you sometimes, too, you know. Always with a very fond tone. The way one would talk about dear old friends around whom one can truly be themselves. Miss Kamisato occasionally joins them as well. Whenever the whole family gets together and they start talking about people they've met and experiences they've had, you always get a mention. It's been many years now since the late Mr. and Mrs. Kamisato passed away. Much has happened in the Kamisato clan in that time. As someone who is old and gray enough to have watched their son and daughter grow up, it makes me so happy to see them meet a dependable friend whose company they enjoy so much. So... In the future, if you ever do have the time, please know you are always very welcome at the Yashiro Commission Headquarters. There will always be at least one old lady who would be delighted to have the pleasure of your company. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Haima likes it here, too! Also, you were saying something about the food here being really great. Haima's itching to try it! We may just have to invite ourselves around for dinner sometime! Haima uh, uh, meant we should come pay a visit again real soon! Ideally around dinner time. 
<laughs> of course. You're always welcome. All right, goodbye for now. We're, uh... Where are we going next? Great! Goodbye, ma'am! Don't worry, we'll see ourselves out. All right, then. Take care now. Hope to see you soon. Oh, are you two leaving already? Yep, everything's taken care of now. Don't worry. Very well. Safe travels. Goodbye. My eyes deceive me, or is that the Traveler and Paimon? Xavier, what are you doing here? I was in the general area, and now I'm in this specific area. There, that's me. So what about you two? We had some questions and thought you might be able to help. Certainly do. I've researched the furnace here in some depth. If there's anything you want to know, just ask away. Like the back of my hand? <laughs> Make no mistake, I have been here a good many times before. Not only that, but I've met people in Inazuma whose families used to live in Tatarasuna years ago. They said it's all true, the history here. Hmm? Oh, well, uh, it's a long story, don't you know? The tale of Tatarasuna starts a long time ago. I'm told that its history is one of the most foremost forging and smelting operations in the nation goes back around a thousand years. Still, the furnace has had a couple of serious maintenance issues along the way. A couple? When exactly? One was just in the last few years, the other was several hundred years ago. A fun fact, I'm not the first Fontaine tech guy to come and work on it either. There was a guy back then too. They say he was a mechanic who consulted on a technology upgrade. It seems like the technological collaboration between our two nations goes back a long way. How about that? Hey, weren't you gonna ask Xavier something about Tatarasuna? Come on, ask already! Oh, I didn't realize you two were here for a history lesson. Me neither. Paimon doesn't know what's gotten into this one today. Feels like we've been preparing for a history exam or something. Hmm? What brought this on? Did you just wake up today with a sudden burning desire for historical knowledge? Sure, go ahead. A kabuki mono? Hmm, no, I can't say that I have. I do know the word, Inazuman for those eccentric types who always go around dressed to the nines. Just the sort of person that I'd like to meet, actually. But sadly, I've never had the pleasure, nor have I come across anything to do with a kabuki mono where Tatara Suna is concerned. Of course! Don't mention it. Oh, we're leaving? Okay, bye, Xavier! Oh, you're most welcome. More than happy to help. Farewell. Looks like you got all the information you're looking for. Sure, but what's up with you today? Whatever it is, it seems like it's really troubling you. Keep your smile, Spino Crocodile. No matter what happens, Paimon will always be there for you. Come on, you gotta keep it together. 
here. Why don't you grab something to eat? You can't go facing life's challenges on an empty stomach. All right, let's head off and go meet Nahida. It's them! Akaba! Sawada! You're still here? Indeed we are. If you have a moment, we'd love for you to join us once more. We have time. What do you want to talk to us about? It's the same topic we discussed last time. Obviously. Still looking for more info about Tatarasuna, huh? Hmm. Should we join them? Unfortunately, we haven't made any real progress. Huh? Oh, uh, of course. I presume you'll want to read mine as well. Here. Well, what do you think? Hey, Traveler. Remember how last time Akaba was saying how he wished he could gather more information about all this? Well, we just got back from Inazuma. So how about we tell them what we learned? What did you find out? Something big? It's a long story. Basically, we have some friends in Inazuma, and... Wow, so many new details. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Well, well, so it all comes down to one man's desire for revenge. Huh, you heard this from a member of the Amenoma clan, you say? Then I guess it must be true. Ugh. So there's no ghost story here after all. This new information actually lends further credence to my hypothesis. Evidently, swordsmiths were seen as having an incredibly prestigious role in society those days, to the extent that harming them was conceived of, at least by the perpetrator, as a way of exacting revenge against those in power. Yes, yes, okay, point taken, you were right. But that doesn't mean I can't carry on with my novel. back at it. These guys are really into this. Uh, 
Oh, I'm so sorry. Look at us, prattling on about our projects and ignoring you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the information. You're welcome. See ya. Keep us in the loop if you find out anything else. Will do. Quite a story. So, uh, this puppet known as the Balladeer erased himself from Ermensoul, hoping that he could change the past. But how was he even able to do that? As the Traveler said, he very nearly became Sumeru's deity. Admittedly, I remember it a little differently. I don't recall finding anyone inside the machine after we defeated it. Nevertheless, it does make sense. If someone were to successfully erase themselves from Ermensoul, the world would change to reflect the new reality. So, you believe this person really existed? And we just don't remember him because... Well, because he literally changed the world? Yes. Theoretically speaking, it is possible to do this. But I'm struggling to imagine the kind of person who would dare go through with it. The Traveler comes from a world beyond to that. That's why there's no information about her in Ermensoul. And it also explains why any changes to Ermensoul wouldn't affect her. So if there's anyone in the world capable of retaining memories from a past that has been rewritten, it's you. It's... Quite incredible when you think about it. Paimon's having a hard time understanding this balladeer guy's motivations. Why did he do it? 
I can only make inferences based on the information we've been given. As for what kind of person he was, only you remember that. Something else worrying you? Something that you can't share? It couldn't change the fate of the ones who had died, right? Once the Balladeer realized he hadn't been betrayed after all, it must have completely changed his view of the people of Tatarasuna. Now he saw them as friends again. He couldn't keep hating humans after that, and if he thought there was a chance he could save his old friends, it would be hard not to try. The story makes sense, every part of it. The Balladeer tried to achieve godhood with the doctor's help. He was unsuccessful, but retained the power to connect with Ermansoul. That power then enabled him to change what was recorded in Ermin's soul and erase himself, even though he didn't have much strength left. Yeah, it does make sense, but it still ended in tragedy for his friends. It just feels so hopeless. He gave everything to do this, but it seems like he got nothing in return. Please wait a moment. I want to check something. Hmm. Found it. This should be the one. It turns out that... I have a strange way of confirming everything she has told us. What is it? A record from a personal collection. It was tucked away in a corner. You should take a look. Is this... a fairy tale? Who wrote it? I authored this record myself. Huh? You... wrote a fairy tale? That somehow has something to do with the Balladeer? When combined with the Traveler's narrative, it's clear that this story is an allegory. Everything in it is a symbol for something else. Hold on! So this record survived from... the... past past? Yes. Any information about the Balladeer or the Kabuki Mono and other records will have been changed. But I wrote this story in a way that means it was left intact. Changing the information in Ermansoul changes to that. But Ermansoul can't change information that was well hidden in advance. I guess I must have written this story as a backup before the Balladeer entered Ermansoul. That's incredible! What a great idea! And sending the Traveler into Ermansoul with the Balladeer must have been a further precaution. I knew she'd remember everything. This story is abstract enough that it still resonates with the present information recorded in Ermansoul. But if we connect all the different pieces together, the true story that emerges is the one she told us. The now-erased life of the Balladeer. There was once a lone monster draped in fox fur. The monster found a family of foxes, 
joined them, and they became friends. The monster lived with the family day and night, and everyone treated it as one of their own. Once in a while, the monster would take off its fox fur at night, and lament to itself as it gazed at its reflection in the water. I am a monstrosity, yet they are too foolish to see it. I pity them. But the monster soon found solace when another came to live among the foxes who was not their kin. A kitten, carved from the wood of a white tree who had been abandoned by the humans. The kitten too wished to become a fox, but its tail was too slender and it could not grow a coat of richly colored fur. Yet when the other foxes saw this, they spoke words of comfort to the kitten. Even without a tail and fur like ours, you are still one of us. Furious at this happy resolution, the monster lit a fire on the mountain. The terrified animals panicked as the fire spread. The only way to extinguish the flames was to make a sacrifice. A gray fox stood up and addressed the monster. It said, You are the cleverest among us. Surely you can help us find a way to solve this? The monster smiled, led the fox toward the fire, and murdered it. The gray fox's heart was turned into a beautiful drop of water, clear, spotless, and pure. The monster gave the heart of water to the kitten, telling him, The foxes have decided. You are the one who must be sacrificed. Take this, quench the flames, and die for your fox kin. The fire was extinguished, but the kitten lived. It left that side of the mountain and found a little bird who had a broken wing. The two promised they would spend their whole lives together, but the little bird did not have long left to live. It passed away soon after. After burying the bird, the kitten left the mountain for good. Never again would it cherish a single creature, nor a single blade of grass that stood on that mountain. The kitten spent the nights wandering aimlessly, gnashing its teeth at the moon. How it wished to swallow the moon and devour the moonlight! If the world could only return to darkness, then it would finally be peaceful and content. I will become the new moon, the answer to everything. Then, no one will know that there were once birds, foxes, and cats in this world. And no one can know that they were different. Dear story, it is his very own memories. I made a backup so that it would be preserved no matter what happened. To become a god, he was experimented on and modified countless times. It was brutal torture, and the only reason he was able to survive is that he was a puppet. This memory was extracted from him by the scholars. Presumably, they kept it to have something to defend themselves with. Creating a deity was just the first step. Some of them wanted to be able to control it. That's why they backed up his memory for later use. I buried it deep inside one of my own dreams, and then hid it inside an allegorical story so that it wouldn't be altered. It's hard to believe that this person really existed, let alone that he tried to get rid of us on more than one occasion. Paimon has no memory of him at all. He completely vanished like a puff of smoke. The balladier agreed to help me look for information about the Descenders, and although he was unsuccessful, he still helped you. Before he vanished, he confirmed an important detail. 
that Conria was where your twin first came into this world. We still don't know how the change to Erminsoul will affect the senior ranks of the Fatui, but in all likelihood, they won't even remember their own Harbinger. It sounds like Paimon wouldn't like this guy a whole lot if he was still around. But still, Paimon doesn't like the way it all ended that much better. This is why Wisdom alone cannot answer all our questions. We look, we see, and we comprehend, but the question still troubles us. So the answer is not everything. People yearn to find the truth, and then conquer the troubles they face. When you give someone the truth, you give them a chance to choose their own destiny. To others looking on, this may seem like a pointless endeavor, but for him, the chance to act on his desire to disappear must have meant a lot. Never forget that even when we walk beneath dark clouds along a road filled with suffering, the light of wisdom is always there, guiding us toward a better destination. And that is what you have been doing all along. Yeah, Nahida's right! Cheer up! How about we go get something to eat? We can pick up this heavy conversation again later. Good idea. Paimon, why don't you take her out for a walk to clear her head? You got it! Come on, Traveler! You need to get out of your head for a while. You'll feel much better after taking a walk. Let's go get a snack from one of the stalls in the Grand Bazaar! That'll be sure to lift our spirits! Come on!
So this is a day in the life of the Traveler. <laughs> I'm learning more about you all the time. A blade embraces its duty, as a jeweler cherishes the-
Benny's adventure team, assemble! <sighs> I only wish life could be as leisurely as this a little more often. <laughs> How greedy of me. Add Astro. Thank you for com.
A blade embraces its duty, as a jeweler cherishes their gems. of Liyue has the most prosperous commercial port in all of Tibet. Ah, ancient alchemy truly is fascinating. A blade is like a tea leaf. Only those who sample it many times can appreciate its true qualities. So this is a day in the life of the traveler. <laughs> I'm learning more about you all the time. Of Liyue has the most prosperous commercial port in all of Tibet. A blade embraces its duty as a jeweler cherishes their gems. life could be as leisurely as this a little more often. <laughs> How greedy of me. A blade is like a tea leaf. Only those who sample it many times can appreciate its true qualities. A blade embraces its duty, as a jeweler cherishes their gems.
with me. Let us find shelter from the rain. Everything. Yeah. 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 
rain has stopped. Any longer, my books would have gotten wet. Family makes ornate umbrellas that block. Everything. <laughs> 
I know. Stand back! Huh? <laughs> Let's light it up!
we go. Rain outlines your fate. There is no escape. Whirling snow. to act. I'm going in! Huh? Rain outlines your fate. Rain cutter! To oblivion! <laughs> Teamwork is dreamwork! Whirling snow! Illusion shattered! <laughs> Let's light it up! You shall perish!
A blade embraces its dew. As a jeweler cher cherishes their gems.
This realm is... If you ever have it A blade embraces its duty as a jeweler cherishes their gems. life could be as leisurely as this a little more often. <laughs> How greedy of me. A blade embraces its duty, as a jeweler cherishes their gems. Blade is like a tea leaf. 
Only those who sample it many times can appreciate its true qualities. Blade embraces its duty, as a jeweler cherishes their gems. So this is a day in the life of the Traveler. <laughs> I'm learning more about you all the time. life could be as leisurely as this a little more often. <laughs> How greedy of me. A blade embraces its duty, as a jeweler cherishes their gems. So this is a day in the life of the Traveler. <laughs> I'm learning more about you all the time. A blade is like a tea leaf. Only those who sample it many times can appreciate its true qualities. Blade and What should we eat first? Have 
you figured it all out? Excuse me, boss. There seems to be a small problem with the last bill. Look, here. Hey! Hey, wait! Hmm? You mean me? No, not you. That kid! Didn't you see? Little rascal grabbed my last two fresh sunsettias and ran off. Look, if you're gonna help out here, you can't keep spacing out, okay? What is it? The work's too boring for you? Or has the big city got too many distractions? I wasn't paying close enough attention. Sorry, boss. I think you're right. Maybe it's the city. It's so exciting. It can be hard to focus. Who's that guy? You know him or something? He's who? You're a strange one, kiddo. You say you don't want any money for helping out here, and then when I actually give you some work to do, you keep letting yourself get distracted. I don't want to take advantage, so I'm happy to pay you what I'd pay anyone else. But if you keep acting like this, pretty soon I won't be able to afford to. No, no, please. I mean it. You don't need to pay me anything. I'm just so thankful you agreed to take on an outsider like me. You're welcome, I guess. But I got bigger things to worry about. Look, we're all out of Sunsetias, and I promised the lady down the street I'd deliver a fruit bowl this evening. Uh, leave it to me. I'll find some more. Just a moment. I'll be right back. Stop. <sighs> I'm gonna level with you, kiddo. I've never met a worker who said they didn't want a wage before. And at first, I got greedy. Couldn't believe my luck. But I figured you'd start asking for something in return eventually. You don't want money. You don't take days off. And in your free time, all I see you do is wander around, taking in the sights. Are you a... a drifter or something? That's right, I am. Uh, we can talk more about that later. First, let me get those fruits you needed. Sunsetius, was it? I'll be right back. Hey, what do we do now? Okay, stay out of sight. Don't let him see you. This'll do. Even though you say he's the balladeer, what are we planning on doing? Stealing his sunsetias? Isn't that a bit too- Oh, all right. This should be enough. Hmm. Ah, guess I should wash them before I take them back. Huh? You two over there. Is there something I can help you with? Ha! He spotted us! You've been following me all the way from the city. I'd have to be blind not to notice. 
Ah, have we met before? No, we haven't met. But you know me? I have no recollection. Uh, are you absolutely sure? Sorry, but I just can't take your word for it. A puppet? What makes you think that? Huh? <gasps> you were right! The look on his face! I guess you do know me after all. That is not something I share with a lot of people. Look, I'm just a wanderer, but seeing as you've gone through all this trouble to track me down, I'm sure whatever it is must be important. Okay, but please let me deliver these goods to my boss first. Are you really working for that guy? He said you don't want any more for it. Is that true? Yes, I ran into him out in the wilderness during a storm and he let me take shelter in his cart. In return, I said I'd be his helper for a while. That's oddly nice of you. Let me take these back. Then I'll come with you, okay? Then let's return to the city. Here you go, boss. I'll leave them right here. Oh, you really went and picked some more. Hmm. Who are these two? Something's come up, and they need to borrow me. Sorry, boss. I'm afraid I'll be away from the stall for a while. <sighs> I was just about to pay you anyway. Go wherever you want, kid. Don't waste your time here. What? I get it, okay? You just wanted to help me out, to thank me for giving you shelter from the rain that day. Even then, I don't understand why you're so adamant that you don't want any pay for it. But look, it was pouring down, and there you were, sauntering along without a care in the world, like you had nowhere to be and didn't even care that it was raining. Imagine you were me for a second. It's a little weird, right? Why is this guy traveling during a rainstorm if he's not trying to get somewhere? And why is he taking a shortcut through the open country if he's not even in a hurry? Uh... But anyway, taking you in didn't put me out even slightly. You don't owe me a thing for it. Certainly not all this. Your time is valuable. You know, you should go live your life. But I don't... No, you're right. Then I suppose this is where we say goodbye. Thank you again for taking me into the city. Don't mention it, kiddo. I've run into all kinds of characters over the years. I just hope you find your path. Thank you. All right, done. Thanks for waiting for me. We can go now. Welcome. 
Get your spices here. We've got all kinds. What's so great about Spanish? <laughs> What's wrong? Huh? Are you...? Hello. I do apologize for the sudden intrusion. We found this guy in the street, but he doesn't seem to remember anything! <laughs> so, yeah, quite an eventful walk! You... say that you are trekking across to that to train yourself. Hmm... Many other Inazumans who describe themselves in this way call themselves Shugenja. Why do you refer to yourself as a wanderer? Well, it seems more relevant in my case. To me, it sounds like a plant with no roots. But these two claim that they know me, and that I have a hidden past unknown even to myself. I wouldn't call it the past, but rather... Uh, this is a difficult one to explain. I don't like to rely on using terms like this often, but in your case, it seems that it ought to be called a previous incarnation. Oh, like a past life or something? Yes, something far more distant than the past. So far away that you cannot perceive it. Okay, I have to ask. What was I like in my previous incarnation? Um... Uh... Oh, okay. I see. You want to tell me, but you can't bring yourselves to say it. Looks like I didn't have the most wonderful existence in my previous incarnation. If it's that difficult to talk about, I have no doubt it will be just as difficult to hear. But I'll be able to handle it. Please, tell me the truth. Is truth something you care a lot about? Yes. Then I'll be straight with you. In your previous incarnation, you did many things that would be considered evil. You nearly died because of what other people did. And many died because of you. As a non-human being, you hated gods and humans alike. You drifted from place to place, never able to settle, even where you found status and identity. You adamantly believed that you were missing a heart. <sighs> Actions rooted in persistence sometimes bear bitter fruit. Sometimes, you have to let parts of yourself go. Or you'll never be happy. I gave everything I had. But it barely changed history at all. In terms of the outcome alone, that's true. Hmm. I don't think I can judge everything I've heard purely in terms of right and wrong. Each choice a person makes belongs to a specific place and time. A chain of cause and effect. A cycle of karma and consequence. That is the nature of truth. If one thing is right, its opposite must be wrong. And yet, dichotomies like this are not enough to explain the world in all of its complexity. It seems like my previous incarnation wasn't the most likable individual. <laughs> We're not trying to hurt your feelings or anything, but... Yeah, we weren't your biggest fans. If we were enemies, why are you trying to help me find the truth? Uh, this is so frustrating! This guy's supposed to be our arch enemy, but now he's just some random stranger we met on the street! He's got so much to answer for, but we can't make him talk because he doesn't remember anything! Uh, what a weird situation! 
situation. Lesser Lord Kusanali, as the God of Wisdom, I trust that everything you told me must be true. Yes, it's all true. I can even show you the memories themselves, if you're willing. Please, I want to see them for myself. I want to experience my own transgressions. Even though it will cause your present self great mental anguish? Oh, I'm just a puppet. With no heart and no name. There is nothing in this world for me to cling to. To fill the void within me. Except maybe these sins that can never be undone. Very well. As you wish. Wait, shouldn't we go with him? This one's kind of on us for bringing him here. Don't worry. Whatever danger I might face, it's my burden to bear. Traveler, could I ask you to supervise him on my behalf? Oh, good point. Given your, um, unique situation, we'd better keep an eye on you. Understood. <sighs> Thank you. Now, prepare yourselves, everyone. This looks like Inazuma. Right now, you're in a dream I created using information extracted from your memories. These memories will show you the raw truth, but be aware that enemies may react just like in the real world. Please be careful. Sounds like an immersive experience. It's a good thing we came along. You don't need to do this for me. I don't deserve your protection. We never give up halfway. Well, we had to once, but that was your doing. All right. Thanks. Wanderer, this is the Shake Pavilion. In your Baladir incarnation, this is where the Electro Archon placed you after your creation. You had a great many memories here. Is that because this is kind of like his birthplace? You could say that, in a sense. You'll see why shortly. I hear footsteps. This place is huge! I can't believe the landslide didn't fill it in. I wonder who built it? The Crystal Marrow Miners? No, there's no way. Look at this exquisite construction work, and so well preserved, too! No mining crew would be capable of this. Hmm? There's someone passed out on the ground. <sighs> Who are you? Y you're awake! What happened? How'd you get stuck here? A are you injured? Uh-huh. Not a scratch. And these fine clothes... Who are you? This man is Katsuragi, deputy to Torichiyo's adopted son, Bikoshi Nagamasa. He found the Baladir in Shake Pavilion, and took him back to Tatarasuna. And the rest is history. Well, it used to be. In the original version of events, Katsuragi was ultimately killed by Nagamasa. Let me get you out of here. Our people are nearby. H hang in there. During the Tatarasuna incident, Niwa was murdered by the doctor, disguised as a mechanic. The Baladir, then known as the Kabukimono, disappeared not long after. As the second-in-command at Tatarasuna, responsibility for what had happened fell to Mikoshi Nagamasa. But Katsuragi had sworn lifelong loyalty to Nagamasa after the latter had once saved his life. At Katsuragi's insistence, Nagamasa killed him to put an end to the Tatarasuna incident. <sighs> Katsuragi seems like he was a good guy. 
He looks like a warrior, but he has a kind face. Why couldn't he live a long and happy life? Nagamasa, I found this young guy in a cave sealed off by a landslide. He doesn't remember his name. Well, we need to call you something. I hear the workers are calling you the Kabuki Mono. <sighs> That's fine with me. Katsuragi, report to Niwa. Tell him we have someone new joining us. I was abandoned, like you. I lived here for a while at first, but there's nothing for us here. We can't stay. Okay. I heard my mom and dad used to make swords, but the factory manager died, and then my dad got sick. <coughs> he kept coughing all the time, just like me. Then Mom started coughing, too. But you can't. You promised me. Yup. We're family now. We're gonna be together forever and ever. This child didn't have a name. Or rather, the balladeer didn't know what to call him. His father died before he could name him. After his mother died, the child stayed in their straw hut alone. Some of the neighbors helped to raise him. After leaving Tatarasuna, the balladeer ran into this child who didn't have a name, just like him. They made a promise to live together. What happened to the child then? He died from his illness while he was still very young. The balladeer came home one day and found that he had stopped breathing. Hey! What's wrong? Say something! You promised me we could be family! You're no different from Niwa and all the others. You betrayed me too. <laughs> the voices have gone. It looks like the memory ends here. Let's keep going. You do realize you're blocking my path. I come not to obstruct you. I've been waiting. What you are truly is a weapon 
one that could be wielded with an iron will. Or you could continue to drift aimlessly. Are you trying to win me over? A long fated rebellion has begun. Why not take your place at the banquet and join those who shall feast? This place is dark. Ugh. Paimon knows this place. It's the Delusion Factory in Inazuma. In the original version of events, the Traveler once encountered the Balladeer here. Such a creepy atmosphere. And so familiar. Hey! Look over there! Well, well, my fair lady. Is this rundown factory and these incompetent fools all for me? Wow. You shouldn't have. Huh. What do you have to gain from belittling your subordinates? You might not want to admit it, but you are a part of this plan. Perhaps you find fighting in the abyss to be a more meaningful use of your time? Oh, but of course, even this pales in comparison to being experimented on by the doctor. <laughs> what a sharp tongue you have. Funny how negotiating never seems to be your strong suit. For the task ahead, I suggest you keep your true feelings to yourself. <laughs> Save your breath. I know what I have to do. I'm sure you think so, but I still think you need to hear it. Don't start thinking you're invincible, and don't let your emotions get in the way. Surely you're not worried about me. I just can't have you getting in my way. You and Child never fail to find ways to complicate things. I'm merely lighting a little fire in this chaotic nation. But you, being tossed out like trash must make you want to destroy it completely. Do you remember the last time you were here? That was a lot of swordsmiths you killed. I'm sure the descendants of the ride in Gokaden are still suffering the consequences now. Look at you. Oh, don't get so sentimental. 
Now, give that poor little tongue of yours a rest and stop pretending like you're above everyone else. Bye then. See you at the victory feast. Poor little tongue? <laughs> She's playing with fire talking to me like that. Who does she think she is? <sighs> Forget it. Someone might find me here any minute now. I should prepare to give them a warm welcome. <sighs> the plot does not end here. There is more of this story to come. Wanderer, are you able to continue? Yes. Please don't worry about me. Why are you staring at me in silence? Can't you think of a nicer way to express yourself? I'm under no obligation to be nice to you. Besides, I thought nothing mattered to you except results in your own interests. Isn't that right, witch? <laughs> Muddle-headed puppet. You're only number six because you can take more abuse than other humans. Do you really count that as an asset? You're about as much fun to be around as a raging inferno. But before we murder each other, it'd be best if we finish our duties. Yeah! Take flight! Over here! <laughs> You can't run! Yeah. Swirling snow! Oh, now you've Stop got me worked up! No, my sword! Huh? No escape! I have taught you everything I know. Grow, grow, grow! Whirling snow! Leave so soon! Pardon my indiscretion. Rain outlines your face. Can't run from dead. Sumeru! Uh... Is that...? Considering that Amorta's sage, Nafis, refused to join this project, I'll take part in the experiment in his place. Welcome. I look forward to a fruitful collaboration. <sighs> when do we start? You seem impatient. You should know that becoming a god is far from a trivial affair. The biological transformation is a lengthy process. As such, I too would recommend that we commence as soon as possible. In the event that a successful connection is established, his body will become permanently bound to the machine, and he will be unable to move independently of it. Nothing worse than what I've been through before then, Doctor. You were the most resilient test subject I ever came across. Thanks to you, I was able to garner a great deal of information. Alas, after that, you were under orders to remain in the Abyss. We barely saw each other, and it became difficult to further refine the knowledge I had gained. That was gracefully worded. Ever wonder what they think if they knew that nothing matters to you, apart from your crazy experiments? I suggest you speak to me in a more respectful tone, Scaramouche. The mere fact of your utility does not make you indestructible. The doctor again? <sighs> that was uncomfortable to watch. That person gives off a very sinister energy. It's normal for him to give you the creeps. He scares the bejeevers out of Paimon. <sighs> Let's move on.
You're a god. Do you think I'm evil? If you accept that he is you, just as you are you, then yes, you are evil. In your eyes, are there any differences between humans and puppets? Do you think there are any differences between your present self and your previous and future incarnations? If not, then what are the differences between humans and puppets? Whoever has tasted the joys and sorrows of life in the human realm is human. Whoever has loved and lost, cried with grief, howled with rage at the tragedy of death that eclipses the miracle of life, they are human too. <sighs> I've seen enough of my past. If possible, I'd like to reclaim the sins that are mine to bear. No matter the consequences, I won't run from blame or punishment. Whatever I am due, let it come to pass. Can you return my memories to me? Huh? But won't that mean you'll lose your current identity? I've always believed that human lives follow a set of rules with each person being a collection of past experiences. As a puppet living in a human world, my life is subject to the same rules. Regaining your memories means reverting completely to your previous incarnation. All the emotions that you discarded will return to you. Are you sure you want to do this? I've lived with the void in my chest my whole life. My creator didn't need me. And ever since I awoke, I've just drifted from one place to the next. But then I met you. And I finally realized that reclaiming my missing sins might be my one opportunity to become my true self. I've always felt I have an innate tendency to yearn for something more, in a way that goes deeper than for most people. But for all my soul-searching as a Shugenja, I've never fully understood it. Looking at it now, it seems that I brought this curse upon myself. So I beg you, grant me this opportunity to gain a purpose, to change my destiny, and end my wandering. Very well. Since your mind is made up, I will return to you that which is yours. You have made your decision. Now, take this. <sighs> Set him free? A puppet? What's he doing here? It's... You're a human as far as I'm concerned. Everyone's here. Wonderful. What a fine blade. Nagamasa will be thrilled. This is... my... Dross will be purged. That's why 
This won't be the end! Significant past! Behold! At my command, you shall fall! And rises. Be more human. Wretched vermin. Squall and fury. Perish! My endless cycle begins! Happy for human! The wind rises! Insignificant past! Behold! Churn! Get out of my sight. It disappeared. Did we win? What did you expect? I'd never lose to that. <sighs> There's the tone of voice again. You're definitely back to your old self. Wait, but it was you inside that thing too. What have you got to be smug about? Sorry. I'm harsh on myself and everyone else. Just the way I am. <laughs> you sound like you're concerned about me. But don't worry. Thanks to you, even if I didn't change a thing, at least I now know the truth. The memory recovery seems to have been a success. This dream has served its purpose. Come on. Let's continue this outside. Welcome back, Traveler, Paimon, Balladeer. <sighs> it feels like we just went on a really long journey. Paimon's exhausted. <sighs> you don't like being addressed by that name? It's fine. But I was just thinking, I should probably change it. 
After learning about everything the doctor did, there's no way I can carry on using a name connected to him. I'm not planning on returning to the Fatui, and they wouldn't take me back anyway. Recent events will have affected a lot of people, and they might not even remember who the sixth is. So, you're quitting the Fatui for good? <sighs> it's like you said, Lesser Lord Kusanali. Everything may look futile, but it wasn't completely meaningless. At least I made a lot of people forget about me. But that doesn't mean your own past has disappeared. Of course. And your main goal, for which you gave up everything you had, you weren't able to achieve it. I hope you can see and understand that. Changing the world, changing the past, changing the fates of other people, these are not simple things to accomplish. What you are looking for is complete annihilation. But this is just a fantasy. Even if the Balladier is removed from existence, the world will not heed your will. Indeed. <laughs> How ridiculous. Do you regret doing all that when you've gotten so little in return? Even if I'm completely worthless, there's nothing in the world worth regretting. Lesser Lord Kusanali, you purposely left that information in Nermansol, didn't you? Yes, and I took pains to make sure that you'd acquire that information naturally. Why would you go to such lengths? You trying to win me over too? In all honesty, your past experiences have made you a useful asset to Sumeru and to me. Winning you over was indeed a part of my plan. But before that, I wanted to tell you the truth about your past. If all I wanted to do was use you, then I'd be no different from the doctor. Very clever. I guess you could say that's one of my virtues. Utility to others is what gives me worth. So if embracing my sins is what it takes to make me useful again, so be it. Oh right, I almost forgot. You're the good guys. You're into justice and all that. Sorry if I have a slightly different perspective on things, but I don't feel like I've been duped. The wisest leaders are fated to end up with the best helpers. I can live with that. I'm glad you're able to think of it in that way. Traveler, in the future, I'll continue to search Soul more deeply and see what secrets can be uncovered. Including the beginning of your twin's journey recorded in Soul. What exactly happened before and after that point? I want to know as well. I will try. Traveler. After I dove into the information torrent in Ermansoul, why did you go to Inazuma? So that's how you found out whose fate had changed. And how. Well, whatever your reasons, you did me a favor. And I'll do everything I can to pay it back. Borrowing and returning are the only real relationships between individuals. I'll balance the books one day. Don't you worry. That's not true. A relationship between two people is not simply a ledger that can be reset to zero. I think deep down you realize this. People who show up in your life don't just evaporate like water drops and leave nothing behind. There is no such thing as balancing the books. Some things in this world can never be brought back, and they can never be changed. Which is why there is emotion in the human world. Everything that you feel is real and lasting. And whatever is missing in you will not be made whole. 
To be human is to live with imperfections. You can choose whether or not you want to be human. Hmm. But humans can't live without a heart, can they? Anyway, I gave up trying to become a human a long time ago. You understand what pain is perfectly well, even without a heart. You're just bearing your feelings. The past is set in stone, but you can keep moving on. And the longer your future lasts, the shorter your past will become, until one day, it is but a tiny fraction of your life. Sounds like you've got a future planned out for me. Everything's ended up being pretty darn complicated. Paimon doesn't even know where to start, but... The most important thing now is that you need to follow Nahida. Otherwise, all our efforts will have been for nothing! Then I guess I'll be helping you from behind the scenes from now on. I'm glad that you've accepted our proposal. Why don't you choose a new name to celebrate? Ooh, ooh, ooh! Paima wants to pick an ugly nickname for you, too! Why? Because... Because... Paima still doesn't like you that much! <laughs> then I hope we don't see much of each other in the future. A name is life's first gift. You didn't say it out loud, but I know that's what you're thinking. <sighs> the Traveler and Paimon have helped you a lot. If you can't decide on a new name, maybe you can ask them for ideas. No! Paimon only does nicknames! If it's a serious name you're after, it's all yours. <laughs> Uh, have you got anything? Are you sure? Oh. 
Oh, all right, if you say so. There, now you have a name of your own. What about a nickname? Are you done yet? Uh, I... Still thinking! Stop rushing me! Take your time. I don't need to see you again until you've thought of one. Everyone who manipulated me and made me suffer will have to pay the price. You mean the Fatui? The doctor, at least. Now that your stance has changed, I believe your future path will change accordingly. But it won't be immediate. You still need some time to compose yourself. Hmm. One more thing. There are still some descendants of the Raiden Gokuden living in Inazuma. Some of them know. Well, they ought to know about the connection between Raiden Gokuden and myself. I don't plan to leave Sumeru for the time being. If you see them in Inazuma, please tell them that I was the one responsible for the Raiden Gokuden's downfall. Even though the events have been erased from the world, they still deserve to know the truth. I see. That is up to you. Huh? But if we do that, then... It's fine. Let them stab their blades into my chest if they so desire. Maybe that's how it always should have been. What's that look for? Don't make that face. I know what I'm doing. That day will come. All right. We're done here. Goodbye, wise deity. And you too. He's gone! What he went through today would have been like living an entire lifetime in an instant. He'll need some time to calm down. Yeah, true. But even so, after everything that's happened, he doesn't seem quite as fierce anymore. So we can finally go eat? Paimon is starving. Thank you both. I hope you will find somewhere nice to go and relax for a while. I've got it! I can end my novel with some words from Mikoshi Nagamasa. You mean because everyone else in the story is dead? Yeah! I heard that Mikoshi Nagamasa died at a ripe old age. He's the perfect fit to be the narrator of the epilogue. The dark clouds had dissipated, but they continued to cast their shadow in Mikoshi Nagamasa's mind for decades to come. Then, one night, as an old man, he had a dream. On the night when that prized blade, the Daitatara Nagamasa, was forged, the people rejoiced, and there was painting, dancing, and drinking. All these expressions of joy melted down in the furnace fire and turned into red clouds that rallied around the final sunrise that Mikoshi Nagamasa saw in his lifetime. Life is a story too long to be told. A journey that you must walk to behold. <laughs> Hunger comes rushing back. Wow, great! Huh? Look at that vase! Did... So 
someone break it while they were cleaning the room or something? Like, Paimon doesn't remember there being a cleaner. You sound lost and confused. I know why you are troubled. Any who knew of this would find their mind overwhelmed. Huh? Is there someone here talking to us? Unfortunately, the fate of Tevat cannot easily be changed. Perhaps a god may have a slim chance. But for anyone else, who can say? When a small animal runs into a tree trunk, though the tree may sway, it is not displaced. The same is true of fate, like a vase that falls to the ground. Whether it is broken by a cat or by a bird, the result is still a broken vase, is it not? History does not change easily, but human hearts can. Believe your own eyes. Only that which you see is true. What is unseen is but an illusion. The voice has disappeared. broken on the ground. Should Paimon go get someone to clean it up? It feels wrong just leaving it there. Just a moment, Paimon will be right back.
Wait, you're that blonde traveler who's on a journey to all corners of Tevat, right? Who's asking? Do you need something from us? You bet I do. <sighs> I was worried I wouldn't be able to find you. I have a letter for you, you see. It's from another Outlander. He was a crafty fellow, let me tell you. Took advantage of a loophole in our mailing system by opting for guaranteed delivery, then filling in the most obscure mailing address I've ever seen. Well, we are always on the road, so yeah, it's pretty tough to get mail to us unless we happen to go to the post office on whim. So, um, what address did that person give you anyway? Uh, he just wrote, <clears throat> next to a small, white-haired talking fairy. Yeah, exactly, right? And if I failed to deliver the letter, I'd have been bound by regulation to compensate him. Really, he got me good. I count myself very lucky that I ran into you here. Of course, here it is. All yours. Come on! Paimon wants to have a look, too! Have something I haven't tried yet, boss. Uh, sorry, sir. I'm afraid you've already tried every type of liquor we serve. Oh? Well then, just the bill, please. That's just as well, I suppose. I do have other matters to attend to. Looks like the gods smile upon me after all. And come now, I wouldn't joke about wanting to see my good friends. <laughs> Wait a second. You must be here on official business, right? What do you think you're doing spending every afternoon drinking at the tavern? You itching for a lecture from Dean? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. The acting Grand Master positively terrifies me. Why would I ever do anything that might displease her? The truth is, I'm in Sumeru to learn about the alcohol industry here. So despite how it might look, I'm actually at Jafar Tavern for strictly business purposes. 
Sumeru spices are famous the world over, and it's long been rumored that this fine establishment was where a certain very popular spiced cocktail was invented. That's why the knights sent me, their foremost expert in alcoholic beverages, to come and see if it is as good as the rumors say. And how did that go? So far, so good. I'm already in talks with some spice merchants in Port Ormos about some potential collaboration. Yeah, that does sound like a great business opportunity. Guess Don Winery and Master D. Luke are gonna make a tidy sum from this one too, huh? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Whether this lucrative opportunity gets passed along to Don Winery or not, depends on how nice I'm feeling. <laughs> Oh? What makes you say that? Very sharp of you. I wouldn't say I'm familiar, though. I just came here on the sly once, when I was very young. Hmm. And? Do continue. <laughs> Do I have to? When I said we could talk about the old times, digging up my past wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Well, all right, since you're so interested. Like I said, I was very young then. Don Winery had only just taken me in. I overheard my adoptive father talk about sending a team of merchants to Sumeru during a business meeting. I'm sure you'll agree that everyone's curious about their roots on some level. And my roots? They're in Conria, which is said to have been located deep underground, somewhere near Sumeru. And so I stowed myself away amidst the cargo, and silently joined the merchant delegation on their trip to Sumeru. But it wasn't long before the merchant delegation received news that I'd gone missing. Their leader promptly found me, and before I knew it, my adoptive father was dragging me back home by the ear. It was a short-lived adventure. Sorry I don't have a more thrilling story for you. <laughs> Honestly, not much. The only reason I knew that Conria was near Sumeru is because I happened to read that in a book when I was young. My life had less and less to do with Conria as I grew up, and so I started caring less as well. I used to believe that I had inherited some sort of duty from my father. But then I began to wonder... Maybe my father left me in the peaceful land of Mondstadt for no other reason than simply to keep me alive. As well as ensuring that I'd be safely cut off from certain things, the thought that I might be able to actually live a happy life there must have been the icing on the cake. This is obviously all speculation. Simply put, I'm afraid that I'm not particularly in the know on this topic. These days, my surname, Albrecht, is probably the only link to Conria that I have left. One death afternoon, please, boss. Tell me, what do you know about the significance of that name, Alberich? D Dainsmith? Ah, you've decided to join us. I was wondering how long you planned on listening in. I believe I've seen you before in Mondstadt. Dainsliff, if I'm not mistaken. So you remember me. Then we are already acquainted, Kaya Alberich, descendant of the Abyss Order's founder. Huh? What? I take it that you weren't aware of this until now, Kaya. Or you wouldn't have been so forthcoming with your surname. Oh my. That's quite a lot of baggage for a surname, isn't it? Though I must say, it does confirm an old suspicion of mine. I suppose that was why my father left me in Mondstadt after all. I'm surprised that you take me at my word without the faintest hint of skepticism. Well, perhaps what you told me just happens to answer some questions I carry in my memories. And in any case, 
I recognize your eyes. You're a pure-blood Conrian, aren't you? Very clever. Forgive me for being direct, but I sincerely hope this new knowledge doesn't change anything. If you've already let go of your ties to the past, then keep it that way. Kaya, you're not involved with the Abyss Order in any way, are you? Hey, hold on now. This conversation has taken a rather sudden turn for the Deadly Serious. And I'm afraid that as someone from Mondstadt, I'm not accustomed to this sort of atmosphere. So what if I know my ancestry? Do I strike you as the type who would be bound by that kind of thing? Relax. I'll be just as delighted to hunt down the Abyss Order tomorrow as I have always been. Either way, looks like we're out of time. I've got a spice merchant to meet in a minute, so I'll leave the three of you to carry on the conversation without me. Uh, well, all right then. You go do your thing, Kaya. See you around. And Dainsliff, no need to listen in from the sidelines next time we meet. Let me buy you a drink. <laughs> trust him, do you, Dane? You're both from Conria, but you get on like oil and water. The fact is, I still do not know him well. It would be meaningless for me to jump to conclusions. But can a person truly be unaffected by their ancestry? This remains to be seen. Well, I suspect that they call your brother their prince, precisely because there is a succession of sorts. Oh, so if he was the founder, he'd be the king, right? I mean to investigate the Loom of Fate. Do you remember that name? Yeah, the Abyss Order's evil plan! We learned about that back in Mondstadt. Not new. Not exactly. My memories suffer from erosion. But while I was recovering my health recently, I suddenly remembered something. Your brother. He mentioned the Loom of Fate back when we traveled together. Apparently so. I was also quite surprised when these memories tallied up. I recall that we were traveling to Sumeru when the matter was brought up. So, you're going to the place that he mentioned back then? Correct. At that time, they must have been introduced in one way or another to this concept. If I recall correctly, we were somewhere in Avidya Forest then. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Maybe we'll discover some secret that's lain hidden for hundreds of years! No. Now is not the time. No, it's just... I'm still waiting for my drink. Seriously?
Wait. This place, it's familiar. What about it? It looks pretty normal to Paimon. Was it like this hundreds of years ago, too? Yes. The forest has barely changed from how I remember it. There is very little human activity here, after all. Let's search the area and see what we can find. Is this... a field? It must belong to whoever owns that house over there. But it looks like it's been abandoned for a long time. You could be forgiven for thinking nothing was ever grown here. Or... wait... Maybe nothing ever was grown here. It's an extinguished bonfire. Forest rangers, perhaps? Looks like it's been ages since it was last lit. And clearly they put it out carefully to prevent a forest fire, too. That's responsible. Nothing else stands out in this area. All that's left is that building. Come on. Wait, we're just gonna go barging in? What if someone's home? Unlikely. There are no signs of life in this area. We should be able to enter without incident. Uh, if you say so. Well, uh... You lead the way then, Dane. <laughs> huh. So there really isn't anyone home. <coughs> this bed looks pretty ordinary. Huh. There's nothing underneath it either. What sort of person would want to live here? It's so dark and damp. Can't be all that comfortable. used to live here like to cook, huh? Can't you smell it? There's a heavy scent of medicinal herbs in here. Oh, so it's a medicine bowl? <laughs> hmm. Seems you're right. You've got a good nose on you, Dane. There's a box over here. Why don't we open it? Uh, and by we, Paimon means you. Paimon's just scared that whatever's inside might bite her fingertips off. Huh? This is... a mirror. It's broken, too. Was this a makeup box? Hmm... That's kind of disappointing. Paimon was hoping we'd uncover some super big secret. Especially after Dane talked this place up! Doesn't look like there's anything else worth our attention here. You sure we're in the right place, Dane? My memories are quite foggy, but my subconscious and instincts both assert that something once happened here. But we'll exhaust ourselves if we search aimlessly. Hmm. I hear noises outside. Let's go and check. Noises? Is it... It's not much. Just some minor adversaries. Monsters? Wow. Dane's ears are sharp, just like his nose! This is a good shape for a five year old. Although, for someone who's as full of surprises as Dane, it's hardly a big deal. Anyways, let's beat up these monsters! Oh, 
harness the power of Gugwa. My apologies. I doubt that the appearance of those monsters was wholly random. There must be something nearby that attracted them. A ley line anomaly, perhaps. Hmm. But it seems to be more than that. Okay. I'll go slightly further out to investigate any issues with the nearby ley lines. I might be a while. You should wait for me here. What? You're going alone? You better not be trying to keep some secret from us. Your suspicions are as banal as they are unwarranted. I merely think that this house should remain the focus of our investigation, and as such, someone ought to stay here and keep an eye on it. Not to mention that if even forest rangers are capable of investigating ley lines, I will be more than able to handle it alone. Uh, fair enough. Guess we'll just camp out here then. Good thing there's a bonfire over there. Let's make ourselves something to eat. All this running around has made Paimon real hungry. as good as ever. Even if there was no other reason, the food alone would be enough for Paimon to stick with you. <laughs> Changing the subject, Dane's taking forever. He said that there might be an issue with the nearby ley lines. How bad do you think it could be? <sighs> we came together, but now it's back to just being the two of us again. You know, now that Paimon mentions it, we really have spent lots and lots of time together, haven't we? Um, so... Don't take this the wrong way or anything, but... Uh... Do, do you ever get tired of Paimon being around? Oh, you stop it! Now you're embarrassing Paimon! <laughs> So, um, next question. Don't know if it's okay to ask this, but... Paimon's curious. What was it like traveling with your brother? The... stars?
months. Being separated without even knowing the reason why. It's just terrible. But we'll find the truth together. Sure as Paimon's your guide. Just you wait, Heavenly Principles. And you too, Tavat. Uh, you know what? We've talked too long about this sad stuff. Let's talk about something happy instead. Because if you're sad, Paimon will be too. All right, all right. It's getting dark, so why don't you rest? Paimon will take first watch. Don't worry, no monster's gonna come and eat you up. Oh, come on! Don't say that! Paimon just wants to look after you for once. Nighty-night! Go on, chew! Off to sleep! Hey, time to wake up. The sun has risen. What a deep sleeper. You do know that we need to... Hmm? Tear stains. You dreamed of your sibling last night, didn't you? All right. Rest here a bit longer, then. I'll head into the forest to investigate. Place is not whatever you think it is. Nor should you be poking your nose into my business. Be gone! Your travel companion? You mean the one that was keeping watch by your side last night? <laughs> your companion departed for the forest early this morning. That much I saw with my own eyes. What business is that of yours, hmm? All you need to know is that I claimed this place first, and what I do here is none of your concern. Do I make myself quite clear? Leave. Well, what are you waiting for? <sighs> if you must, suit yourself. <laughs> I've been observing you, and you don't look like a forest ranger, nor someone from the academia. Still, I'm warning you, no funny business. Promise me that, and you can do as you please. <laughs> okay. Fine. Whatever. Just move aside. I'm heading in. You... <sighs> oh, go on then. Have it your way. I knew I wasn't going to be able to hide this anyway. Just... But no overreacting to anything you see in here, okay? You understand? Come on then.
Mind your own business. And don't worry, he isn't aggressive. <laughs> How could he be? He was too young for anything like that. So don't you lay a finger on him. Just find yourself a corner to rest if you're tired or cold. Huh? You know Conria? Who are you? Exactly. And how do you know I'm from Conria? <sighs> do you worship a god, traveler? Hmm. Sounds like you've had an eventful life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, um, my name is Ida, and you are correct. <laughs> I was once Conrian. Uh, oh, uh, I apologize for my earlier hostility, but you must understand, as, as far as I'm concerned, humans who do not worship the Seven are nigh extinct, and all who place faith in the gods are my enemies. That may be. But the fact is that chances to talk to people like yourself have been few and far between since the cataclysm. This wretched curse of immortality. I, who knows how long I must continue to suffer like this. The curse... <laughs> it was a little gift given to the people of Conria by those vile gods. We lost our home, our loved ones, everything. The agony of the cataclysm itself was already too much to bear, but then came the curse robbing us any chance of release. All we can do is watch helplessly as our souls erode and our bodies decay. Because, although Conria began with a single bloodline, it was a home to others, too. Any who forsook their gods and came to Conria were welcomed as our fellow citizens. When the Cataclysm came, we pure-blood Conrians were declared the greater sinners. Upon us, the gods placed the curse of immortality. But those whose ancestry belonged to the domains of other gods were punished with the curse of the wilderness as they fled, turning them into monsters. He is Kari Bear, my illegitimate son. <sighs> How times have changed. <laughs> I could say that out loud with no consequence now, but oh, it was once a matter of unspeakable shame. I was a noble of Conria, by blood, but I resented the life that my family had arranged for me. And then, one day, I met a beautiful woman amongst the people. Her roots were in Mondstadt, but... That mattered not to me. It was love at first sight. <laughs> Kari Bear faced great hardship from the very moment of his birth, all due to my selfish desires, and, and I was never able to be there by his side for any of it. And after all that, he turned into a hilly troll right before my very eyes. I always owed him much, and now I, at least I can finally be close to him. She was. 
We were separated. I do not wish to dwell on it. Hmm. It could be worse. I suffer the pain of loss because I once had everything I could wish for. <laughs> and now, now that I have lost almost everything, the little that remains I see with new clarity. If nothing else, at least I still have Cory Bear. Ah, oh, yes, I, that reminds me. I, I only returned here to check on Curry Bear, but I do have other things I wish to do. You may come with me, if, if you're uh, so inclined. Here. I'm sure you're wondering why I brought Karibear here to Sumeru. Well, it's because he needs a medicine that can only be made here. One which will help him to recover his clarity of mind. I do not hope to break the curse. I am well aware of my powerlessness against the punishment of the gods. But it is said that this medicine is imbued with the power of Sumeru's god of wisdom and can awaken the mind from a state of deep stupor. It has been used in the past to treat cases of mania. <laughs> I believe that it might just work. <laughs> I read about it in a book. <laughs> From the Royal Library of Conria. It was banned. <laughs> I mean, since this medicine requires the power of the Seven to work. In my youth, I, I disliked the life of nobility and craved excitement. I was leafing through some forbidden text and happened upon it. <laughs> what other choice do I have? Hmm? What exactly would you have me do? Huh? The gods have already punished us. What does one more sin matter now? Never mind. As uh, long as you understand. I'm sorry. I struggle to take control of my mood sometimes. Perhaps a consequence of having lived too long. <laughs> As it happens, I am in dire need of some help to make this medicine. My hands don't have the dexterity they once did. I, uh, I fear they may be decaying from within. Oh, thanks to this curse of immortality! <sighs> Okay, to start with, uh, take this ingredient. Mm, uh, also, uh, do you have any uh, of uh, Sumeru's regional specialties on hand? I believe they're called Kalpalata lotuses and Sumeru roses. Oh, wonderful! Oh, in, in that case, we have everything we need. This is the method for making the medicine. You just need to follow the steps.
Benny's adventure team! No one's joined me on an adventure in ages. Is it done? Oh, splendid. Let me see. In all honesty, I do not know what the end product is supposed to look like. <laughs> the band book didn't feature any illustrations. <laughs> well, the moment has finally arrived. Curses. No, no! We need to perform one final step to complete the medicine. I said before that this medicine relies on the power of the God of Wisdom for its restorative effects. <laughs> Which means we must pay a visit to a statue. Let's go. Bring the medicine with you. How can I bow before this thing? God of wisdom! Look at me! I will utter no prayer, nor will I sing your praises! You and your kind destroyed my home, wrought unfathomable suffering on my compatriots, yet he here I stand before you. you you cannot mock me more than fate itself already has. God of wisdom, I seek not to disavow myself of the sinful blood that flows through my veins. I wish only to beseech you to have pity upon my son, Carabere. He was turned into a monster before he had the chance to witness anything beautiful in this world. This is no fate for a child. <laughs> if everything the gods have done was in order to have the impious people of Conry bow their heads, then I bow to you now. I have given up all I ever stood for. All I ask is for a tiny miracle. For Carabere to see this world once more. Please, God! I beg of you. I have made quite enough of a fool of myself for one day. Let's go.
Company's adventure team, assemble! Bear? Oh, we've prepared the medicine. We might as well try it. Cory Bear, it's me. It's your father. Cory Bear. Cory Bear. I'm sorry I couldn't be at your side when you were born. And that I... I failed to reach you and Mama in time when you both were suffering. But I'm here now. Papa's been by your side all these years. I've never left you, not once. Are you still angry with me, Cory Bear? I know you're awake now. Do you not want to talk to me? I'm so sorry, Cory Bear. Forgive me. Please, say something, anything. Please. Please! <laughs> oh, gods above! What more do you want from- You took everything from here, and I still bowed- I'd give you my very life if only you cared to take it! But you won't even let me die! <laughs> I knew it. I should never have trusted anything that had to do with the gods. I was <laughs> just eluding myself. The gods of this world have never stood with humanity, not even for a moment. Uh, other reasons. What do you mean? Huh. You, uh, you really think so? Give up? No, no, n never! And yes, you're right. I, I, I cannot let myself wallow in despair. Even if I must stay here with him for fifty years, a hundred, I, what difference does it make? I, I do not lack for time. Hmm. Let's go. We'll make another dose. <laughs> the most crucial ingredient in this medicine is the unusual mushroom, which makes things complicated, <laughs> but not impossible. I grow them <laughs> in that field. The details don't matter, right? <laughs> Curb your curiosity and just do as I instruct. <laughs> if you truly wish to help me, that is how you can do it. There is a waterfall near the statue I prayed at. I need you to collect some water from there around uh, two in the afternoon. <laughs> I'll be here watching Cory Bear. Once you're back, I will make some fertilizer for the mushrooms. <laughs> Good. <laughs> then in please.
Ah, you're back. Kara uh, Bear's condition is stable. By which I mean he still isn't responding. Anyway, give me the water. I need you to stand guard here for... Uh, a while. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't let any forest rangers approach the house. Understand? Ah, good. I'll be back soon. The fertilizer won't take but a moment to make. What happened? Was it monsters? Oh, thank goodness you were here. I couldn't have taken them on all by myself. I'd have to uh, hide and wait until they were gone. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, I've got the fertilizer. The effects can take some time to kick in, so let's get on with it. Next, we pick the mushrooms and repeat the same steps as before to make another dose. <laughs> I trust you still remember the method. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I have been so very wary for many years. If only I could fall asleep here in this field and never wake up again. <laughs> I do indeed. That's why it was just a f fleeting thought. Thank you for your help once again. And now, for the final step. Back to the Statue of the Seven. Let's begin. Huh. Wait a moment. Hey, what was that? Kari Bear? Oh no, he must have left while we were too busy preparing the medicine to notice. Come on, we have to catch up with him. That's... that's not Kari Bear. Oh, right. Kari Bear's scarf was a gift I once gave to his mother. I use it now as a marker of sorts. My... my eyes must be going. <laughs> How could I not recognize my own son? <laughs> This decrepit body of mine. Ah, oh. oh, yes. It doesn't seem interested in us in the least. It seems intent on walking in that direction. Where could it be going? Yes. <laughs> the more we know about Hilly Churls, the better. <laughs> Let's head in. What a ghastly place. Has it always existed? I, I swear I've never noticed it before. Huh. It looks like they're... Uh, Worshipping. Sometimes uh, walking, sometimes kneeling in worship, and, and it appears to be in earnest. I've never seen anything like this in all my life. What in the world does this place conceal? Oh, there's only one way to find out. Shine down! <laughs> 
your time. Is this a teleportation device? What energy is powering it? your time. your time. Everybody stand back! Huh? Illusion shattered! Ha! Ha! Ha!
How did I get on the ceiling? Did the room turn upside down or gravity itself? like I need to find a place to insert the room. not granted you the right to enter this place. <sighs> Do you insist on an audience? Very well. And I grant you the trial of destiny. He was a, 
He was... He was a perfect being. I'm in awe. He had the most wondrous aura, a perilous yet beautiful power. Oh, truly mesmerizing. And yet, you were able to defeat him. Oh, your strength is greater than I had imagined. <laughs> Let's continue on. I find myself growing more curious by the second end. More excited. to the end. shed a tear at the end of time, as I gaze back upon your life. just happened <laughs> when i saw that thing my my heart was instantly at peace i i was overcome by a, a sense of awe or, or joy perhaps
I am. I feel uh, good. In fact, I, I, I feel better than I did before I came in here. <laughs> How peculiar. Oh, uh, uh, is that so? All right, as you wish. Cory Bear! Oh, thank goodness! He's still okay! I have a strange feeling that what just happened was meant to be. For this to happen, right at the moment when I was dreading worshipping at a statue of the Seven, it's as if fate was calling to me. <laughs> you say that I bowed before the- well, I have to try. No matter what, you said it yourself. I, I have to exhaust all options. <laughs> Cory Bear. P Papa? Oh, Cory Bear! Oh, my goodness, it worked! It's a miracle! Oh, oh Cory Bear, my dear son! You see? It worked! Kari Bear can speak again! Uh, where's... Mama? Mama is... Uh, Kari Bear, look at me. Do you know who I am? Of course. You're Papa. Yes! <laughs> Salvation! Sweet salvation! Yes! Yes! This is... this is what this feeling is! How, how do you feel, Cory Bear? Are you fully awake now? Yes. It feels like I just woke up from a long, long sleep. I dreamed that I was hiding in a little room. I didn't dare go out the whole time, and I didn't want to either. Wait... Uh, my body! What happened to me? Is this... Is this me? Papa? What's happened to me? Uh, uh, don't panic, son. It's just... Uh, while you were sleeping, we, we went into a fairy tale world. There's no more Conry uh, here, um, no more home, but, 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 do you know what that means? No more red sky, no more end of the world. In this world, you, you have to be a, a little monster, but, but you get to stay with Papa forever. Am I dead? No, 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 of course not. 
Look, Cory Bear, you, you still have Mama's scarf on your arm. That means she's watching over you, protecting you. So how could you be dead? Really? Yes, really. You've all only just woken up, and, and this must all be very confusing for you. Just rest here for now. Things will get better. Oh, oh, and, um, you have to promise me something. Never take off your mask. Understand? Whatever happens, you mustn't take it off. Okay, Papa. I won't. I promise. Not since that day have I been so glad as I am now. I can't believe this is really happening. <laughs> I knew that placing my hope in the Seven was a waste of time. <laughs> I, I even worshipped at one of their statues like a, like a common fool. <laughs> Never before have I humiliated myself like that. Once a murderer, always a murderer. <laughs> I was naive to think that the gods who conspired against us would ever offer redemption. But the god we saw in that cave, oh, now that was a truly mighty god. Nothing like one of the seven. That wondrous power, it was truly... Enchanting, eh? <laughs> Surely that, that must have been the reason I bowed down. Hmm, now then. After one beseeches a god, and the god responds by answering their prayers, should they, uh, um, do something to show their devotion? Piety is hardly my <laughs> area of expertise. <laughs> But surely I should honor the god that has honored my wishes. A sinner? Oh, don't be absurd. You, you don't know a single thing about him. How dare you utter such blasphemy? You and I have both witnessed his divine power. When has the Seven worked a miracle like this before? Hmm? Never! He is a god mightier than they, and yet you would call him a sinner. Oh, preposterous! No matter. <laughs> Believe what you will. You cannot shake my faith. I am going to pay my respects with or without you. Rain. <laughs> 
outlines your fate. Witness the power of Gugwa. My apologies. Kamisato art. Sumetsu. Let's light it up. Shines eternal! Shine down! Huh. No! Impossible! What happened? The Hilly Churl worshippers have disappeared, too? W was it all an illusion? That's true. Yes, it, it can't have been an illusion. I still feel that awesome and wondrous power flowing through my mind and body. It was neither illusion nor coincidence and, and certainly no dream. <laughs> it was a wonder. Yes, a divine wonder. Let's go, Traveler. There is surely a reason for its disappearance, and I do believe that someday in the future, we shall see it again. Could he really have been a sinner and not a god? Kari Bear? Where has he gone? Oh, no, no, no. Maybe someone else came by and found him? No. No, it can't have been that. There's there's no sign of a break-in and, and no sign of anyone having been here. This does not bode well. What if he's spotted by a forest ranger or an adventurer in his current state that he... Oh, wait a minute. This isn't how we left it. The... Oh no. Did he? <gasps> the mirror, it's broken. He must have taken his mask off. And seen what he looks like beneath it. Ah, if he'd just done as he was told! Ah, we have to find him. It's his scarf. He dropped it. Uh, looks like we're going the right way. Uh, come on. Caribear! Caribear! Where are you? Curses! Forest Rangers. Who are you? We haven't seen you around here before. What's your business here? Have you seen a, uh, hilly churl? Uh, a hilly churl should have, uh, come past this way. <laughs> have you seen it? 
I asked you first. Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be. I said, have you seen a hilly churl? Hey, whoa. Look, there are hilly churls everywhere. What's the big deal? We see plenty of them out here. Exactly. Matter of fact, we just took out a few of them back there. Those dumb boneheads. You... 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 Force... Ranger... Scum! You... You spawn of the seven are all the same! I'll have your heads if you so much as laid a finger on Curry Bear! You... You're raving mad! You've got some gall coming here to our nation insulting the Forest Rangers! Curse you all, Forest Rangers! I don't get it. Why make such a huge fuss over a few hilly churls? Makes no sense. You... He'd only just regained his mind. How could you do this to him? So tell me, forest rangers, did you really spare none of them? Did you really take out every last hilly churl you saw? Jeez, you're really not gonna let this go. Fine, you weirdo. If you must know, I happened to cross paths with a solitary hilly churl when I left the team to, uh, <clears throat> use the toilet. I was frightened at first, but it didn't seem to have any interest in me at all. It was just bumbling along in that direction, so I left it alone. <gasps> yes! Wonderful! <laughs> Wonderful! Let's, let's go! Uh, we have to find him! Wait, you're leaving? Not even a thanks for the info, goodbye. Cory Bear! Cory Bear, stop! It's me! It, it's Papa! Whatever you saw, it, it was... It was all a trick. An illusion. I told you, we're in a fairy tale world now. Nothing here is real. Please, Cory Bear, come back. It's time to go back. Cory Bear? How could this happen? He regained his mind. He, he must be able to hear me. Surely. Come, Curry Bear. We have to go home now. Papa's here to take you home, all right? <laughs> I see. I understand now. Finally, it all makes sense. <laughs> Ah, 
Aha! Traveler, you're awake! Finally we can rejoice together! Wait, no. Why am I still calling you Traveler? Oh, I have known your true identity for some time now. <laughs> I suspected it was you oh, from the beginning. <laughs> I had to talk to you to be sure. Oh, of course you haven't. With your status, you can hardly be expected to know all of us. In any case, I've been using a fake name this entire time. <laughs> Ida is the name of a servant I once had. My real name is Clotar. Clotar Alberich. You saw it too, didn't you? Unmistakable, eh? The power. Inside Kari Bear and the power of the one you call us, Sinner, it was one and the same. <laughs> yeah. I am positive now. It's the power of the Abyss, isn't it? Oh, at long last, I have seen it with my own eyes. That is no business of yours. A Sinner, yes. Salvation for a sinner can only come from a sinner. Karabair did not deserve his fate, but now... It's wonderful. He will be able to weave his own destiny anew. Born into abject sorrow, he shall now become... The Loom of Fate. Sinister. Dangerous. Oh, I never imagined that you, of all people, would deny the Abyss. How ridiculous! We once believed that you would bring new strength and hope to Conria. To us, you were the Abyss. A wondrous mystery far beyond our imagination and comprehension. And the one who controls the Abyss can control everything. We yearned for that future. We looked to you to take us there. But what did you bring us instead? Oh, Prince of Conria. Uh, what did he just call me? while you were unconscious. I checked the ley lines nearby. It appears that the Abyss tampered with them, and they've been in turmoil ever since. Information and memories flow within the ley lines. What did you witness? You mean Clotar Alberich? After founding the Abyss Order, his faith in the Abyss led him to do a great many things. But the curse of immortality continued to torment his body and mind. And in the end, neither his faith nor the abyss he worshipped could save him. After a hundred years, he lost his mind completely and was never seen again. Yet his dark legacy lived on. The defiled statue that we encountered previously was just one perverse product of his use of abyssal power during his life. You could say that. He wouldn't be the Abyss Order's prince otherwise. Are you alright? You have a troubled look on your face. 
Hmm. So you saw his memories from centuries ago, through your own eyes. It all but defies belief. Still, as I'd suspected, the notion of the loom of fate did indeed rear its head during that time. And it seems closely connected to Clotar Alberich's son, Caribert, and what happened to him. And yet your brother never breathed a word of this incident to me. I wonder, was that the moment that he decided to go down this path? Indeed. Clearly this series of events sparked a long period of deep contemplation. This was where it all began. What is it? The field? What does that have to do with anything? You mean here? Well, let's start digging and see. You scared the Duke out of Paimon! Did, did you rebury them yet? A male and female skeleton, buried together. Interestingly, the male skeleton appears to have been interred much later, and it's holding a silk scarf in its hand. But what does this mean? And how did you know that there were bodies buried here? What? That's impossible. Unless... Clotar Albury finally found a way to rid himself of the curse. Mm. This all raises far too many questions. I need time to think, and to search my memories for some missing pieces. We should part ways here. Huh? You're just gonna leave? Why? You could come with us, you know? It's better that we split up for now. I think that he might have seen you. Who's he? Yes. I have my suspicions as to his identity, but I need to confirm some other details before I can be sure. If the time is right, I will tell you when we next meet. But what do you mean that he saw the Traveler? How is that possible? I fear that while these things would limit anyone else, they are no obstacle to him. What? Why? What is he? All right, let's leave it there. Get some rest. Goodbye. <laughs> there goes Dane. And just like that, it's back to being the two of us again, huh? Hm? What is it? in mind.
And it seems Sumeru's changing for the better now that Nahida's in charge, right? Kaima just hopes this peace will last a long time. And then Nahida won't have any more new problems to deal with. Yeah, guess you're right. Hmm. We somehow always find ourselves right in the thick of it. Who knows what will happen next? Come to think of it, maybe it's all because of you. Maybe you're just a magnet for trouble. to our next destination for now. Ah, look who it is. Running into you in a place like this? I can see you two still love wandering around. Oh, it's Dia! Hmm, since when are we just wandering around? We're usually taking care of some serious business. Even though it may have nothing to do with our journey. But never mind that, what brings you here? I just finished a commission in the desert for a usual client of mine. Nothing too interesting. Just escorting a shipment of goods. I'm on my way to report back. That's when I saw you two all the way over there, chatting away. What were you two talking about anyway? Huh? Y you serious? Can't say I saw that coming. Hmm, but you are travelers after all. I guess you'd never stay for too long in one place. Bumping into you like this will become a rarity. Ah, I'm starting to feel sad just thinking about it. Hey, how about I gather a few mercs to escort you two? What do you say? Thanks, but no need. Oh, Paimon had no clue you'd miss us so much. But don't worry. To see everyone when we get a chance. <laughs> Sounds good. All you need to do to get to Fontaine is cross this stretch of desert and navigate some waterways. Knowing you two, I'm sure it won't be anything you can't handle. So, uh, when are you leaving? Oh, wait a sec. Paimon just remembered there are still a few dishes in Sumeru that Paimon hasn't tried yet. Now, where's that list Paimon made? Hmm. I see. Guess you won't be needing a going away party or anything. It's sad enough to see you go like this. Though, now that I think about it, Sumeru wouldn't be what it is today without you. Seems true heroes always prefer leaving quietly. <laughs> by the way, should we go say bye to Nahida? Oh! Good point. No need to bother her in the real world. Then, I guess this is goodbye for now, Traveler and Paimon. Whether as a client or a friend, you're always welcome to come find me. Goodbye, Dia. Bye bye, Sumeru.
all that sand and water, we finally made it! Oh, this must be Fontaine's port! Wow! Everything looks so advanced in Fontaine! Paimon's heard that the industry here is extremely developed, and there are all kinds of unusual machines! Just seeing the sights as a tourist is nice, but maybe it would be better if we found something to do! What do you think? Good idea! Nahida gave us lots of useful information. Seeking out the seven is probably still our best source for information at this point. Yeah! The more we can learn, the better. So, what do you think the Hydro Archon's like? Will we get along? Nahida said that she has a very unique personality. Whatever that means. To learn about a nation's god, start with the nation's people. There seems to be some locals talking over there. Let's go see if we can join the party! If you ask me, it's a tragedy how things ended for him. Clearly, he was a pretty decent person. Yeah, I didn't expect that kind of ending for him. I thought he would at least fight on a little longer for his family. I was expecting a sudden plot twist, but it's a pity that it never happened. Still, his story is quite the tearjerker. Uh, excuse me. Can I help you too? I couldn't help but notice you standing here listening. Uh, hi! <laughs> We're travelers new to Fontaine, and we had something we wanted to ask. But you seem to be really busy talking about some kind of play, so we didn't want to interrupt. A <laughs> uh, play? Oh, no, no, no. We're talking about something that really happened. In fact, it's a case that was just heard a few days ago. Really? Like, a real trial? But the way you were talking about it and the words you used just now made it sound like some kind of story. Well, good tales are often based on true stories, aren't they? And what you see in reality may also be someone deliberately putting on an act while harboring ulterior motives. Whether something is true or not simply isn't that important. The main thing is whether the story being acted out on the stage is splendid enough. Oh, but it looks like you're not from around here. You probably don't know that the Fontaine Court of Justice is called the Opera Epicles, or more commonly known as just the Opera House. Shouldn't court cases be treated a little more seriously than that? Not to question Fontaine's way of doing things. It's just that putting someone on trial is usually a very serious thing. <laughs> no worries. Other visitors to Fontaine have wondered the same thing. You could say that we just don't want to waste the moving stories behind those cases. And as for your worries about whether the cases are treated with due reverence, we have the absolutely just and honorable Chief Justice Nouvellet, as well as the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, a machine created by the Archon. Between the machine and the Chief Justice, false charges and injustice are a thing of the past now. The Oratrice? Is it some kind of machine too? Oh, Paimon's curious. We should check it out if we get the chance. Wait, I might almost forgot to ask you our question. Um, do you know what we should do if we want to meet the Hydro Archon? Oh, that's easy. Just go to the Opera House. Lady Farina practically lives there. You could definitely say it's her biggest passion. Huh. I think what they mean is that they wish to speak with the Archon personally. In that case, I'm afraid it's going to be a tad more difficult. You'll have to make an appointment well in advance, and it'll depend on whether or not she has any time slots available. Huh. Is the Hydro Archon super busy taking care of official stuff? Wait, didn't you say that she's always at the Opera House? No, no. Lady Farina seldom takes an interest with the nation's affairs. 
The reason it's difficult to make an appointment is simply because she's incredibly popular. That's right. After all, she is the Archon. Though she may tend to get a little dramatic from time to time, people can't get enough of her. Huh. First time Paimon's ever heard of an Archon being described that way before. <gasps> Wait! Paimon gets now! The Hydro Archon is kinda like a big celebrity here, right? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. <laughs> Perhaps you could even say our mascot. Hang on. This is still Fontaine's Archon you're talking about. You should show some more respect. Yes, you're right. I guess I should at least try to be a little more respectful in front of visitors. Otherwise, I might get arrested and find myself face to face with Monsieur Nouvellette. <laughs> Come on. Sure, there's a lot of laws here. But nobody's going to be arrested for saying something disrespectful about the Hydro Archon. that we can find the Hydro Archon at the Opera House. But who knows how long making an appointment will take. <sighs> Guess we could have a look around the city in the meantime. Hey, what are you looking over there for? Huh, maybe something's the matter. <gasps> She's not going to jump into the water, is she? Uh, maybe we better go check on her. It was on a deserted moon. night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. Revealed in the next volume? Oh, drat.
Twas on a deserted moonlit night that the hero approached the vile dragon's limpid lair. Now, this is what I call a moment of solitude. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Wow. Huh? All will be revealed in the next volume? Oh, drat. I never embark on a journey without a good book to accompany me. Thank <laughs> you. 
something like If you're not...
Curiosity deserves a reward.
curiosity deserves a reward. Thank you. 